Good morning. So we are at DFW and I'm continuing my kind of pseudo realistic flight series. Um, previously I flew to a site in Canada, didn't go super well. <laughs> this time I'm going to create one of my flights down to Costa Rica that I took on Spirit Airlines. So we're going to start here at DFW. And I picked the route that was as close as I could find to where I actually flew. We flew a little farther east, and then we kind of cut down south. Uh, we didn't quite go along the coast like that, but we did once we got down through the panhandle. So we're going to head down, head over Daytona there, and then we'll make our quick approach into MCO, and we will land off on 17 left. Mm, I think uh, most of my arrivals into... MCO have been on 17 left, which is fine. It's a common, commonly used runway for that purpose, but should be a fairly fun flight. The other thing of note is I'm doing this in the A320 Neo, um, at least the A320s, and I believe the Neos are actually flown by Spirit. So again, trying to make this as realistic as possible. I have been in the A320 Neo once in this game before. I mentioned it previously in a video where my nephew was trying to figure something out with uh, autopilot. By the time I got in and airborne, he had already figured it out. So I promptly exited. So the settings for the autopilot are not too bad. And I've already filmed this, and I'm doing it as a voiceover. I thought that would make this a little easier, though I already regret that decision because so much happened in this. Um, if you have already flown this airplane, then you're probably already seeing me making several mistakes in the way the autopilot is controlled. Um, I did figure this out fairly quickly as I started my descent and even my climb out of the DFW area. So I felt this autopilot was much easier to figure out than it was in the 787 Dreamliner. And I think the overall instrument cluster made a lot more sense, like looking at the navigation or the um, that 160 degree arc in front of me and then setting the range of the map. Everything just kind of made a lot more sense. There are plenty of buttons and things in here that I don't really understand what they do, but on the whole, everything worked a lot smoother and up until final descent this was the most fun i'd had doing one of these long haul flights or pseudo realistic simulation site uh, flights since probably flight simulator 2000 fsx i just kind of dinked around because i was way too busy with other things to really do it um Flight Simulator 2000 and I think a century of flight were the ones that I did the most realistic quote-unquote simming flights in. So this flight gets me the closest to that that I've had before and was a ton of fun. But uh, you'll see and we'll cover the numerous issues that I had with the actual approach and landing when we get there. But for now, the pushback was a lot of fun because I again I started pretty much at the gates that I'd actually been at that I actually departed from taxied along very similar places that I'm used to going on you remember the issue with the front gear that I had with the 787 that doesn't happen with this plane this plane's able to crank that nose wheel realistically and I can basically turn 90 degrees flat out without any issues. I didn't even have to floor the engines to get the plane to respond or move, so hopefully they've gotten that fixed. In the middle of shooting the um, the flight here, they upgraded the game and released the Norwegian uh, fjords and all the other uh, scenery updates to the game, so it shouldn't impact anything, but uh, I have not flown the 787 to see if any of that's been corrected. So, you can see there goes the nose wheel cranking hard left and just super fun to see this happening. So, I was very impressed with this airplane. What I wasn't impressed with, as you'll see here in a minute when I get going, was the taxi route that they gave me. I don't, I think I was yakking over the top of the readback, but it was pretty nuts. So, I'm going to speed up as we go along here. I also noticed I had a bit of a drift, but we'll come back to that. So if you notice, it's got me taxiing onto the runway here. And again, I followed what they were saying, just going, what? 
Then it took me off the runway and continued down the taxiway. I have no idea why it did this instead of just keeping me on the proper taxiway, but whatever. Now you notice I'm kind of drifting. I'm not actually doing that. I noticed that one of my, um, I believe one of my trigger, uh, trigger analog trigger sticks has a bit of a drift in it. So I set some dead zone on it. It didn't seem to stop it. It made it a little less, but it didn't seem to stop it. So I don't know if that's an issue in the game or if it's an issue with my specific stick, but it wasn't an issue that I'd seen previously in any other airplane. But it was a lot of fun coming up to this area. There's a, uh, just up there on the right, you can kind of see it over there, is a uh, observation deck. It's fun to come out here and watch the airplanes go. One thing I did not like about this airplane, at least on my computer, was the in-cockpit view. Now, I've trimmed off most of my other monitor's view, so you can't see everything that I can actually see. But it felt like I was sitting super close, and if I zoomed out, it kind of gave me this weird effect where it didn't feel right. Like, the field of view was kind of screwed up in the airplane. I don't know if that's how it is naturally. I may have to try it in VR and see if it gives me a much better experience, but I felt like the 787 was much more manageable from within the cockpit than this plane was. Um, it just, I don't know how to describe it, it just felt wrong. Like when I would come out of the airplane and look from this default field of view, it looks natural. The scaling, everything looks correct. I can gauge distance properly. But as soon as I go in the cockpit, it looks like I'm zoomed way in. If you're a photographer, it's kind of like putting a full frame lens on a cropped sensor where you get that bonus 2x zoom essentially out of it. And it just doesn't feel right. Like look at the Pappy lights. Now look at the Pappy lights. It just does not look right. And this view looks more accurate than from inside the cockpit. And I know this one's pulled out a little bit, but I can at least gauge the distance and the depth in this one properly. Whereas when I'm in the cockpit, it just doesn't work right. So I don't know. It just didn't feel right, especially with the overlay on the cockpit. I couldn't see enough of what was happening from my personal opinion. So I do love hearing the creaking of the airplane in here, the overhead compartments and all that stuff making some noises and the rattling of the plane as it throttles up. You can kind of see it down there on the uh, bottom left of the screen, but I absolutely love the indication of where my throttle is going so it you can kind of see it on the left where it's giving me my speed there's an arrow that's pointed up and it gives me the rate of speed increase and thrust and all that and then the altitude does the same thing with the little arrow on the side and then you can see the red dotted line appearing there just at the top at about 218 knots Based on your flap position, based on your speed limiter, all those indications, as well as your altitude, it will come in and tell you kind of where your speed should be to be safe and functional and all of that. And it was really helpful. It made this a lot of fun to fly because it just gave me information in such a simplistic, easy to understand way. The other thing you might notice here is I was taxiing around the airport, I took off and my frame rate's pretty decent. I think uh, when I was on the ground, I was at about 18 to 25 FPS. Once I got airborne at this stage, there's a few hiccups you'll see as a bunch of stuff kind of renders in or as I go through the clouds, but I was on average between about 23 and 30 FPS through here. There were a few dips, again, a few small sections were kind of went back down to the 18, 19s, but it was totally playable. And if you notice, I'm at the airport, I'm flying around it, and the ground looks fantastic. The textures look much better. I don't know if they did something to revert back to what had been set up prior, but a couple videos ago, I was just giving all these complaints about the performance. My FPS took a nosedive and they supposedly had released this big FPS improvement to the environment and it just wasn't working for me, at least. Things just looked terrible. And uh, it, I just couldn't figure out what was going on, whereas now things are much improved and look a lot better. Now you can see there's an issue down there at Love Field where it's struggling to stream in some of the textures, but the rest of the city looks good. And I, I have been to Love Field in this game. I kind of went over there and started, and it does look good. It just, for some reason, it wasn't grabbing the textures properly in this uh, flyover to load it in. So it just looks kind of 
flat, but everything else seems to look really good. Now this is one of those issues with the autopilot. I didn't set something correct and the autopilot was, uh, me and the autopilot were kind of struggling for uh, thrust control and then altitude. So I get it fixed here in a second, right there. It was just I'd messed with the vertical speed instead of just letting the flight manager take over and do my climb and then turning on auto throttle. So once I kicked all that back on normally, everything started flying properly. So we have a good climb up and out of the Dallas area. Um, when I left on this flight, it was about 6.30 in the morning. The time of year was a little different, so when I left, it was kind of maybe 30 minutes after sunrise, so it was still, the sun was still a bit low on the horizon. I set this one to be about 6.30 when I spawned in, and uh, I guess just due to the time of the year, the sun was up a little higher, but I remember my first flight out, most of the city was covered until we got over downtown, and then just the whole cloud layer ended in just a beautiful view of the sunrise over the city and all the, the other lakes and stuff. So, the bulk of this flight is going to be done fairly simplistically. Um, I'm going to speed through a ton of the flight. I didn't record 100% of it because I know that can get a little boring, so I focused on the departure and the climb out. Then I just sort of recorded key moments of things that looked good just to kind of show the smoothness, the FPS, and the climb out. I did have to request a drop to a lower altitude level because it had me flying at 38,000 and I believe the ceiling of this is 37.5 or something. Anyway, it had me above what the specs of the aircraft list for my ceiling. So I had it lower, drop me down 4,000 feet and I was able to fly a lot faster. So sit back, relax, I will come back in and we'll start talking about the problems once we get closer to approach. So just a quick call out here. We are on our initial descent coming in over Daytona. This was really fun to look down and see the uh, racetrack and the airport and the big uh, aisle front line out there. And then the, the banking turn was just gorgeous to see. But on descent, you probably saw it there for a moment, the contrails basically coming out of the engines, heating up the air and everything. That was really neat to see. I don't think I'd seen that in the jet, small jets, business jets that I'd flown on. So that was pretty cool. We're about to enter final descent here. All right, now just to kind of preface some of the issues here, this is my first time flying the airplane. I hadn't picked up on all the little details of the speedometer that it was telling me. I was looking for some um, other controls to modify some settings. So as I came in, I wasn't quite at the right speed range and I had a lot of issues getting the plane to actually go down and slow down. The speed control and auto throttle, for some reason, I, I don't know what happened. I must have touched it, I must have done something to it, but I kicked it on and it wouldn't turn off. So my first approach, I'm coming in, I'm coming in, I've basically on my, my control turned the throttles down. I turned the autopilot off thinking the auto throttle will disengage, but instead my plane accelerates and I start to climb up, so problem one on that front. Love seeing the gear come down on this thing. So I've got my initial flaps down. You can see the plane is angled way down. You can see there on the bottom left that my thrust is pretty much near the limit for this flap level. And you can see on the right side of the screen, the um, 
level of the flap. So I'm not at full landing. I'm at, uh, I think, 20% second or third layer. I'm still coming in kind of fast at 180, but I'm flying it kind of like some of the smaller jets and other planes. This plane really generates a lot of lift. And you can see there, as I put the flaps on for full flaps to land, the plane just shot skyward and it killed the autopilot and everything. And now I'm basically aiming full nose down, trying to get this thing to come down. Auto throttle was holding me at about 200 knots and I just couldn't get the plane to nose down. And I finally turned everything off and was aimed straight down with my throttle, basically near idle. And I just could not get the plane to go down. So I pulled the flaps a little bit, executed a go around, punched it to get airborne again. Downside is there was nothing programmed in the computer for a missed approach. So instead of flying around, I was just basically going to be orbiting the airport. So I kind of manually set my altitude and flew off in the distance to re-enter the path and allow the approach system to bring me back into the runway. So you can see there, the final leg on my nav didn't get completed, so I've taken over and now, and I'm manually kind of flying the airplane to go where I want it to go. So, full flaps to land, this plane can really, really go slow, but you really have to be careful with the throttle. I don't know where I did it, but you can see I've set the throttle to 200, so somewhere when I was moving my mouse around, I accidentally clicked on that and I couldn't get rid of it. I don't know why, but that's what was screwing me up when I had auto throttle on. And when I turned off the autopilot, I had thought that auto throttle would shut down. That is not the case. So I switched everything over to landing mode again. Now you can see my map just to the right of my horizon, artificial horizon there is now in landing mode which is very handy. I'm bringing the plane back in completely manual. I'm flying it myself. This plane flew very well. I've got auto throttle helping me on that front. Gears down. First flaps are out. I'm trying to get altitude to control me. I've got approach on now and the plane's starting to line itself up and we're heading down slowly but my speed is still too high. I should have already disengaged auto throttle, but I hadn't fully caught on to the situation yet. So I'm getting ready. I caught it there and I started to slow down, but I was going too fast still. So as I engaged more flaps, you can see the plane basically nose diving, but I'm still gaining altitude because I'm going too fast. Finally, I kind of go, okay, I'm screwed. Cut it, cut it, cut it. It's not going to work. Turn you off. <laughs> turn everything off. I can't get it down. I thought kicking on flaps to full would work. Did not work. Those flaps just got me airborne. And then I stalled and just kind of fell out of the sky. <laughs> so that was a big bust at that end. And then finally there at the end when I clicked it up for the throttle, hey, it finally got rid of it. I don't know why that didn't work before. So that was my first two attempts at flying. And now this time we're going to do it in real time where I was coming back in. This was my fourth, no, this was my fifth landing attempt at coming into this airport now. I'm doing this in full real time. My second attempt, I just was going too fast still. I couldn't get the plane to slow down enough, so the flaps had me sky high. Came back around another time and basically didn't have flaps on at all. And I, um, I came in a bit fast. My next attempt, I had I tried full flaps again and I stalled. So I was going slow enough that it was great. I was coming in, I was doing well, and then it I just didn't maintain enough RPM on the engines when I hit the full flaps, and I just slowed down way too much and just fell out of the sky. So if you look at my speed now, when I was much closer to the runway, I was still going close to 200 knots, whereas right now I've let auto throttle and the approach system handle things basically on their own, and I'm doing 170 knots right now, so I'm already much slower. I'm still having issues getting the airplane to descend properly. I don't know what's going on with it, but there are times where the plane will just stop descending. I don't know what it's thinking, it will just stop, and you can see it pulling back. I'm trying to get down to 2500 and it was going down quickly, then it stopped, and now right there it just pulled back up again, and then it's starting to go down again. I don't know what's happening. It does descend, it does work, 
it just doesn't seem to do it smoothly, and I'm not sure quite what's happening. I haven't messed with it enough. I was just trying to complete this flight to, to get the plane on the ground. I did love having all the extra traffic around. So I've got my flaps at, I believe, the second extension now. I've got my gear down. I'm coming in much better. My speed's now at 150. You can see the warning there at 140 and then basically the stall at 130. So I'm flying pretty close to minimum speed. I've got my altitude going down further, just trying to bring the plane down. For some reason it was landing another plane next to me, which does some humorous stuff if you kind of keep an eye on it. Love the visuals right now. Graphics are definitely looking good. Alright, so we are coming in. You can see the Pappy lights from here. I'm too high. Which is why I keep trying to get the plane to go down, and I was paying close attention to my thrust in there. Does it tell me I'm going too slow? Does it tell me I'm going too fast? And it had picked up the speed a little bit, so now I've got it throttling back down to try and bring the plane down. I tried to uh, kind of take off the auto throttles a lot earlier because they caused me a lot of issues before. And now I'm basically trying to feather the throttle myself to keep myself slow enough but functional. So I'm back up to about 170 knots from the 160 I was going earlier. Got approach on. Auto throttle is off, so now I'm starting to slow down. Then we're coming up on 160, which is much better. I'm just really trying to feather it. And you can see I have not extended the flaps any further until there. And you can see everything kind of dropped down a lot further. And that was on purpose because I was really trying to float this sucker in and set it down nicely. So the first Pappy light just kicked onto red, meaning I'm getting closer to the glide slope, but I'm still too high. And I'm really trying to be careful with my throttle here because now I can see the nose of the plane is starting to angle up, which is better at this point. I shouldn't be nose diving like I was, but I also shouldn't be aiming up super high. I should be kind of aiming straight at my landing zone or a little before it because I'm going to flare. You can see we're down to 140, getting closer to 130. I'm doing much better now. I'm getting ready to cut the autopilot from approach. I did not do full flap extension just because it was a bad idea. I was wanting this thing to bring me down as far as possible before I cut it, but I was getting nervous. I cut it and my controls went a little loose, but I was doing okay. And then I throttled back a bit too much too soon. And I couldn't pull up in time. I lost lift and I came down pretty hard. But I managed to actually mostly properly land the airplane and get it on the ground. So I was very pleased with that. I, I took a lot of experimentation to figure out the flaps and just how much lift this sucker can generate in order to bring it onto the ground. And of course there's that stupid Delta plane that landed in the woods out there, which was kind of funny. Um, but I was overall very pleased with the fact that I got this plane down. I understood enough about how it flew now to make a super slow, steady approach. I should have kept my throttle on um, as I made my approach and I would have been able to flare it much better. And I wouldn't have had to try and pull back so much because I had cut so much thrust it ended up dropping my plane out of the out of the sky. Had I just continued on maybe a couple percentage points down, the plane would have come out much better than I did in this final approach where it just kind of hit the ground really hard. But I was very pleased. I figured the plane out. I managed to get it on the ground. I've got more understanding now of the auto throttle system i'm still going to play with it a little bit especially on my next flight i'm hoping i don't have to do four go arounds on the next flight because i'm going to be landing in a much more difficult airport i don't know why it sent me to general aviation parking but whatever 
Alright, so we're going to taxi over to where we parked in the real world when I did this flight. And the next flight will be taking off from MCO and flying down to Costa Rica, the capital city, and landing at SJO. SJO is a single runway airport. It's not super long, but it's plenty long enough for the needs of this flight, so we'll have some interesting fun. Um, uh, this airport's very interesting in design and layout, and because I play this enough in Tower 3D, I didn't really bother following it, especially since it had done so many dumb things in routing me previously. So, whatever, I don't know why it's sending me to general aviation. But you can see there's my partner spirit plane there, so we're going to go park next to that. Came in a little bit fast, but we managed to pull it off. And I, I hadn't really been in a jet before, so I hadn't really tinkered with some of the ground settings that are available so I wanted to have a bit of fun with that this time and show kind of what it can do so we'll come in here and park I think I did a decent job parking there goes the green train bit tricky up front but kind of fun to watch the jetway roll out and the little uh, wheels under it kind of maneuver properly So it had a bit of an issue with the baggage and some other stuff. Orlando Brown, NKS Could you please send the baggage? But got that fired up, and I'm just going to leave you here watching some of this neat stuff. They actually modeled some of the interior portions of the aircraft and the ground crew, other than being a little drunk, I think. Did manage to connect up, did put some bags in the plane, so pretend that this is the end where they're taking the bags off but uh anyway we're gonna start here at gate 76 when we get ready to go and we'll fly down to costa rica following as close of a flight plan as i can get um again i haven't mapped anything i haven't looked at what routes are available but i do remember how i flew i do remember the scenery and then my return flight from costa rica I'm not sure if I'll do another flight over here to MCO uh, because we kind of came a funky way to get around some weather or if I will just do my direct flight back to Dallas which gave some pretty neat things to see but it should be kind of fun looking forward to it and I'll leave you watching kind of the ground crew do their thing before it cuts out and we'll see you next time thank you for watching